So I wanted to talk to you guys today about the gravity flyer. Guys, a lot of people want to know, why is this thing on the ground? Why can't we just hang it up somewhere where we see lift? Can we see lift in a balance between that and the weight and stuff like that? Guys, there's a very special reason it goes on the ground. If you've been watching my channel, you see me go into different endeavors. For instance, the charge test on the paper lifter, things like that. I also show earth as a ground that you can use in a circuit. There's a lot of different ways to understand this, but the best way and the clearest way to understand this is through the high voltage. We just went through a video, two of them actually, one validation, one of the original concept, where we can actually change the volts on the amps based on the frequency and also based on the, uh, the I don't want to say it, either the beep frequency or we change it in the duty cycle. So, let's understand this, guys. When we are dealing with it, there's so much going on. We want to put this thing on the ground. What happens? The first thing that's going to happen is the first thing that happens when you make a lifter. It's going to suck to the ground. Now, is that a bad thing so far? No, we saw it in the testing that Alexi did when we saw the capacitor and we saw the piece of PVC or a ruler. We, we've seen that test. Here's the thing. When it reverses the test, and it shows you the anomaly, you start to understand why this is working. It's pushing the gravity flyer down. It is now creating charge in the earth to go up to a line to it. Now, because we know that when we change the volts and amps and something by the frequency, it also makes the charge or it goes to a magnetic field. Now, if you align everything in there, you are creating more charge in the craft to meet the amount of charge at the ground. Therefore, you're amplifying energy in the craft. Now, when we flip that, you are now taking that energy because you're not going to disperse it back into the ground. You are going to convert that energy into another form of energy in the craft. You're not losing it at all. That's why it has to be on the ground. I always show it in my video when I do the testing that things pick up an energy. And it seems so odd, doesn't it? But this is the whole reason why it's doing it. Because it actually sucks down with charge to the earth, now we're accumulating charge in that form. So is it going to come off the ground right there unless we change that and flip that charge? No, it won't. It'll start sucking down. It'll keep pushing it down. The whole idea of this is to build up that charge and make that force even higher and higher and higher until we can get to the level where we can capture that energy now. That's kind of the point of why it's on the ground. Understanding how the high voltage works is a massively hard thing in this. Because you're dealing with fields, you not only have a high voltage field, you have a Tesla field. Now, the two are interacting with each other in a very positive way, not in a violent way. When we say violent way, what do I mean? It means that you have one energy, and as soon as it hits the other energy, it starts exploding everywhere in energy. Okay, So you're getting this field that's expanding and contracting, and it's almost uncontrollable. That's not what we have here. We have one field moving another field. That's what's important about this energy. It now works to change what you did. So, we have high voltage, right? We know that high voltage now will change based on anything else coming into it. Okay, so what happens when you take a Tesla coil field and I now push against my high voltage? What's going on now? Now, understand this. I am now changing that field of static electricity we're getting on the top and bottom disk, I am now converting it to magnetism. That's why it needs to be done this way. Now, it's kind of crazy. I've always said for years that I wanted to push down the magnets on the bottom plate. Why do I want to do that? I just want to change the magnetic value inside this thing. I looked at putting a bifiler coil under the bottom of the center plate. And although it's a good idea, 
it was trying to amplify something in too much in one direction when I already had it right in front of me. I just didn't see it. So when I have that Tesla coil field and it's on the center plate, just understand this. We're going to expand that field out till it touches the top and bottom disc. Now I'm going to convert the top and bottom disc from a static volt where it has heavy charge into a magnetic volt where it does no longer have heavy charge on it. It'll charge like magnetism does, but now I'm going to change it into a magnetic volt. Now, what's the difference? Now I can work on pushing that magnets on the bottom down. When I do that, I'm changing the interruption in the field. Because this thing has a Tesla field that goes not only around the disc, it goes up through the entire craft. Now we can start to understand this better. We now are at the point with this interaction that we can push those magnets down and make this thing jump. That's the flutter in the disc. We are trying to make this thing force it into that bottom, into the magnet, and create a repulsion. It's that simple. Now, that's our jump. Remember, in the gravity flyer, we have two different processes going on. So let's back this up just a little bit. One process handles the jump, okay? It also handles the consistent levitating factor. We have a second process that's the fields. The fields block out everything from the Earth. All the rays that come down that give us all of the uh, force charge upon us to charge into the Earth, we're blocking that with that field. It's now making it go around it. We are creating our own environment inside that bubble. Inside that bubble, we're going to convert the air into charge. Therefore, now the weight of it will increase to what it is to the ground. That's why that's important now. But when we get it up in the air, it no longer shares that force down. It now is in equal mode. It will stay right there in the middle and not allow it to go down or up. We must force it with a burst of energy. You look at the Tesla coil now in that field and you start understanding this. I'm trying to take the Tesla coil instead of creating feedback in it, right? where I'm forcing it back into it and having it create a heavy energy in there, okay? It's multiplying the energy because it's stuck in that number one coil and it wants to come out. And we're building, we're building, we're building. And then we burst out into the gravity fire, that field, boom, it expands. It takes that actual high voltage field and throws it out really fast. A rapid expansion of the field. So when we do that, we get the jump. So what's the original levitating factor in the craft? Well, first you have to get the jump. You have to suck in the energy from the ground. It's got to convert it. Then it has to pop up off the ground. It is no different than a coil sitting over a magnet. When we do that, we pop it off the ground. Now, the second part has to kick in. If your Tesla coil is not high enough in value of energy, it will not create this. We're just, oh, my hands are screwing up here because my right hand is busted. Just like this. It's a consistent pulse. It's a consistent pulse that goes off. Why? Because the Tesla coil itself is oscillating. It's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. It continues to oscillate. Therefore, that field has to be strong enough on the inside to make it hover. If it isn't, we're underpowering the craft. That's why a lot of times I keep telling you guys this little uh, Cyric Cider circuit wasn't working for me because I could not get enough energy into it. I know the values. It does not have enough energy to sustain flight. Now, when we look at this thing and we want to jump again, again, we got to be able to hit a massive pulse. Boom! Right out. Just extreme extremely fast, faster than my hands went. It's got to be able to push that field. Now, what does that mean for the rest of it? We know the energy is coming in. We know where it converts. We know that it goes in there. We know what the pulse rate is. We also know the field. We also know that we're taking air in there and we're converting that into charge. 
and we're converting it into magnetism in order to amplify that Tesla field that comes out. As the Tesla field comes out and touches the high voltage disk, those disks become magnetized now instead of charged. If you don't understand the high voltage in order to convert these factors, it makes it very difficult to understand. You're going to get a lot of strange readings when you start looking at it. It won't make any sense right away. It's because this is going on. We're converting the high voltage continuously into something else. This whole craft is worked in a balance. And if you don't understand the balance, it's hard to understand which part to amplify. I get a lot of people saying, hey, take this. I want to put you know, copper in this. I want to put uh, iron in this. I want a bunch of different things. We want to amplify this one effect. The problem is that's not working cohesively with this craft. You're going to amplify the part you want, but you're not going to get the whole result you want because now you've destroyed another part of the craft that had to function based on how that part functioned. Therefore, you can't do it. So, once you understand all these factors, now you can start amplifying the energy itself. You don't need the parts to change. The parts are working perfectly. There's no getting around that. The whole understanding of this can you understand high voltage and how it interacts with another high voltage field? I continuously say this. I'm using DC, not using AC. It's a sine wave, but it is in no way AC. Please understand that. If you can't get your head around that and you want to keep calling it AC, the first thing you're going to run into a problem with is it's not the same AC that comes out of your wall. Why isn't it working the same? It's supposed to be AC. Well, the first thing they're going to tell you is, well, yeah, but it's a little bit different, but it's the same thing. No, it's not. It's just not. It's a sine wave. Yes, it is. It's not the same thing. It's not AC. AC is built a certain way. It's a very destructive energy. If we put AC into this craft, it would ruin it. It ruins everything. It burns up motors, screws things up, has way too many amps, and is absolutely a destructive force in this process. We're looking for something that's more manipulative, okay? Something that we can change. That's why I do this with the ZVS. You go, well, you take the high voltage, you put DC into the ZVS, and the ZVS puts a pulse rate into the flyback and the flyback gives you your high voltage you go okay even if you go to an ac flyback it does the same thing you have a battery pack it goes into a zvs that goes into to a pulse signal that goes into your uh ac flyback and then your ac flyback goes into a voltage multiplier guys we're still doing dc we say that we convert it but when you start looking at this, please understand this. DC is a closed loop system. It will not allow energy to come out of it. You go, well, it's a special type of DC. No, it's not. It's just not. It's high voltage. It's separate, something different. You go, well, it's a special type of AC that, that doesn't react the same as your wall plug. No, no, it's not. Again, we're creating something different. This is something that you should understand. We are creating something that will change how it is. It's like a chameleon. Every time we put something new into it, it changes everything. It'll change the heat value. It'll change the magnetism value. It'll change the charge value. It'll change the volts and amps. It'll continuously work as this little bubble that's going in and out like a fluid cell. This thing continuously changes. You cannot use regular terminology when you talk about this because you will start putting your head in the wrong mindset because you will start adding values to this that don't belong. That's why I continuously break it down in the way that I do. The more of the understanding of what the voltage is doing, the better off you are in this process. Applying someone else's knowledge here does not work because they did not go through the high voltage and start to change things and see the back and forth. We saw it in the validation video. We saw that you can sit there and just change the frequency and it changes the volts and amps. 
what's not shown in there? Whether it goes from charge to magnetism. Then how much heat's in there? Is it going to get to a cold heat? Okay, where it's completely cold and hot on the edges. Okay, could be cold energy. Guys, there is a conversion in this because of the way that it works. Because it can fly through the air and create a spark gap, and it also can change the values of magnetism to charge. I know a lot of you haven't done this. I encourage you to do the paper lifter experiment. It will teach you a world of knowledge about charge. Something that you would probably only get if you work with the guys in NASA or start building their stuff. They hold charge in things for a long time. Paper continuously gives charge and then takes it away quickly. It doesn't stay in there forever. So, interesting thing that happens in there, but if you need to change everything in this like the gravity flyer does, it's the perfect energy. So, I'm going to go to the AC flyback and the voltage multiplier, and I'm going to have a voltage positive and a voltage negative multiplier in order to do this. Why? I just need the energy a little higher. I don't like the weak energy. And I'm sure Alexi himself looked at this and said, there's got to be an easier way. I've seen him say it many times. There's got to be an easier way. Well, because we understand what we're doing now, there is an easier way. Now, what about the feedback on the Tesla coil? We said go to ZVS. Fine. Why do I do that? Because I'm looking for a jump in the amount of energy here. I need to do this thing rapidly. One, I need enough voltage just to get my hovering voltage. Number two, I need enough to go to a jump. Do I need to hear it go back and feed back into there? No, not if I understand how the piezoelectric buzzer works. It is a receiver. It's also a transmitter. Now I know it's transmitting all the time when you start hearing it clicking. We don't want that. We need to muffle that out. How do you do that? You put more voltage into it. Now the voltage putting into it overrides everything and doesn't pick up the frequency of the craft as a receiver. That's important. Now, when we want it to work, we push the button. Now it no longer overrides that frequency. It now uses the frequency of the craft itself. When we do this wrong, and I've shown it many times the wrong way, we are ruining the effect. We aren't giving it the jump it deserves. It'll show up as energy in there as a constant. We don't want energy in as, as a constant. We want it as one rapid fire pulse. That's what we're looking for. Again, that's why we put it this way. That's why we say the saw blade. It comes up with the different frequencies. And what do I mean by this? A lot of people don't understand this. Okay, here's your frequency. Okay. And then under it, you're going to have another one, right? And the amount between the two is what I'm looking to exploit. I want this thing to have the highest amount of difference in that. Okay. You say, well, how do you get that? Well, you look at your Tesla coil matching your piezoelectric disc. You'll see peaks right here. Now they're not going to match up completely. One's going to be under the other. When I find the highest value right here, just in this one little spot, just like this, that's what I'm looking for. I don't need the highest peak. Not up here, to down here. It really doesn't matter. What matters is the difference. We need to look for that. That's what I want to exploit. And I always say it like this. When you find the right one and it's in the right octave, what does that mean? I am going to shove that second voltage so far up this one's you-know-what that it stays there. It's going to want to come out, but it can't. It's too far in there. It's going to go back. Come out, it's going to go back. That's how Alexi does it. It stays consistent. So we can shove this thing, move it, push it, sit on it. I don't care what he does. It's going to have the same value in it. It's going to want to stay right there. It cannot get out of it. It's shoved too far in there, will not come out. Okay, got a problem on his hands, that's what it is. In this case, he used it to his advantage. He understood that every time he clicked it in the wrong one, even though it seemed like it was the right one, it just fall over. And you go, okay, well, what did I do wrong? 
you were not in the right frequency when you hit that last button. When he starts hitting the button, it starts changing the octave in it. Call it what you want. I always say it like this. It's like a singer. We're just changing the tune. Change the tune, change the tune, change the tune, change the tune. Hit the right one. Glass shatters. That's the way it works. That's the amplification. He's simply looking to put it right there in the right tune. That's as simple as it gets. So we understand this crap, guys. It's not like we don't. We've gone through every single process in this craft and identified it. I'm sure for those looking at oscilloscopes, you saw it far, far faster than I did. I sat here and watched for every single process to go on. I wrote them down in my notebook. Then I verified it with my oscilloscope to find out what's going on. I asked other inventors as well, hey, please verify this. Show that you got it. See if it works on yours. And sure enough, every time it turns around, they're verifying it. Why? Because I did the work, guys. I put in the time to get it right. Now, this is where we're at. Now that we understand the charge, the conversion from the ground, we understand how it works. We understand the high voltage. Guys, we've probably added probably 15 layers to this thing. You know, probably in the last few weeks. Just by understanding some of these effects that go on and all the interactions. That's why I continue to show different videos on my channel. Because maybe you'll get in the right mindset of seeing this thing the way I do. Sometimes that's what it takes. You know, we can talk about it. But if you visually see something, it's going to say, wow, now that really hits in my mind. Now I can really see it. That's what I want. I need you to understand it the way I do. Now. My hand's getting better, guys. Look, I'm starting to get it. Start to get movement in my fingers. I'm almost there. Probably by tomorrow, I can start winding my coil. I'm super excited. Now, I'm going to get this thing wound. I'm going to use as much material as I can to get it right, to get it to a heavy holding spot. What do I mean by that? I need that ZVS not to explode on me, which is great because I tested it and probably in the wrong ways. And I can admit that. It, but I did find out how tough this thing is. Way, way better than just a transistor. Okay. Oh my God. Is it give a give? Is it going to give us what we want? Yes, it is. It's going to give us the exact thing that we want. I'm not going to be able to hear the feedback. I'm going to create it on my own. There. What is the feedback? So as he's holding energy in, he builds it up and then he shoots it out. Right. We can simply bypass that. All I need to do is create enough to make the hover. Then, as I hit another source, I immediately jump 15 volts, 20 volts. What is that? What do I mean by that? Sounds like it's such a low number, right? But just understand this. As you put that much voltage into your Tesla coil, you're getting thousands of volts out of it. So there's a conversion rate. I don't necessarily do the conversion rate. I just want you to see how much more power is going in. I'm making this thing hit a monster level. If I change it by 30 volts, understand this. I'm doing it by, you know, hundreds of thousands of volts or whatever it is that it comes out to. It's a monster number. This thing is going to have a monster amount of power at once. What do I expect the first couple of times? I expect I'm going to blow those motors. And I totally expect to blow some equipment. And you say, well, why would you do it if you know that? I need to find the levels that it operates at. That means minimums and maximums. That means we're going to have to spend some money here and just allow it to do it. And I know that sounds bad, but it's the right way to do it. I don't want to sit here and guess and tell you, hey, I think it's going to blow up at this. No, I'm going to show that it blows up at this. This is the maximum. Here's where we are. You know what the coolest thing about these motors are? is I've tortured them. You've seen them in my high voltage test, man. If I'm throwing, you know, 20 kV, 30 kV, 40 kV at this thing, and it's still running on two little PC fan motors, man, these things are monsters. These things are working great. You see, the only time that I've blown these things is when the wire itself touches the frame, and then the Tesla coil energy goes directly into it. In these things, it doesn't go directly into it. It's an indirect interaction. So I don't necessarily blow these things. Now, 
We have some people out there that are working on their actual uh, timing and stuff of this. And the RPM is important. You have to get it where it hits a resonance value. So if you're just doing that, I'll give you a quick little thing on this. When you hit it, it'll change the actual sound of it. You're going to hear a rumble in the craft. That's when it's shaking on the ground a little bit. If it silences and smooths out, you're out of resonance. If it starts to rumble a little bit harder and you hear it pick up, you're in the resonance. You know, it's a very distinct sound. You'll understand it when you find it. Okay. It's the best way I could say it. Generally, bottom has to be 11.5 in the amount of volts. The top has to be right around 8.5 in volts. And then it'll work. That's on the PC fan motors. On the regular DC motors, you're going to have to use a 10-turn potentiometer. Because they are so fast in getting past the point of resonance that you have to bring them down some. And your potentiometer has to change. You need a little bit more wiggle room in there. A standard potentiometer is going to go way too fast and blow right past your resonance point. I, I don't generally recommend going to DC motors. Stick with the fan motors. But that's just me. Uh, it's easier to pull them in resonance that way. Um, it's, it's a lot harder with the DC ones. They blow past resonance points easily. So you have to have two drivers in order to get it right. Anyway, let's just go over this one last time. Why is it on the ground? Why is this field converting so much? We're taking the energy itself from the craft when it creates a charge, it sucks it to the earth. Again, when I go like this, that's just arrows, guys. I'm just showing the charge going up to it and meeting it. Therefore, the gravity fire and the actual ground are like this. They're trying to crush each other like you're crushing a can. They're putting pressure against each other. That's what charge does. It creates force. We're living in, you know, in the earth where we're getting charge constantly putting on us. The more bigger the mass that we are, the more charge gets placed upon us, the more it pushes us down. We have to be able to break that. Now, it can be used to our advantage because charge can be turned into energy. That's what Alexi's doing. He's taking that amount of charge and converting it to energy inside the craft because the high voltage works that way. It converts charge to energy and it creates charge to magnetism. It'll also push out in the amount of heat that you get. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. It all changes in that high voltage. So some people say, oh, well, you need a certain circuit to do this. Well, yes and no. If I use a voltage doubler circuit, Will it still work? If you can convert the amount of high voltage, yes, it will. If you use an AC flyback, will it work? Yes, it will. If you use a DC flyback, will it work? Yes, it will. You're converting charge to magnetism, volts and amps to frequency. As long as it does that, you're okay. The harder you make it to change those things, the worse that you are. You have to be able to understand this in a very, very clear way if you want to do that. If you do not know how to do that, you will not be able to convert it. It will not change well for you. You're going to over amplify the wrong things. You're not going to get to change. Now, some of this stuff, just understand this. It changes automatically. That's the problem here for most people. They go, okay, we're going to amplify this. There's too much of it. You cannot get that change, okay? This thing changes automatically on a basis that we aren't quite sure about yet. It's so fast. It's so rapid. It does it all the time. That's why he ties all this stuff together as one unit. Because it's rapidly changing, constantly changing everything in the high voltage you don't know if there's more volts or more amps in it one time. You don't know how much heat there is in it one time. You don't know when it goes from charge to magnetism. And in this, the flow works so consistently well with each other that it's peaceful. We start amplifying things. We start creating destructive parts. And we're not understanding 
what's going on. It has to be peaceful. It has to work consistently together. That's part of the whole understanding, guys. Anyway, hopefully you guys learned something from this today. There's a lot of knowledge in this thing, guys. Why did I pick this craft out of other ones? It's for this reason. You do understand we're creating a gravity well here. As soon as we start building this stuff and we get the push and the pull of the Tesla coil and we get the high voltage changing, it's creating a gravity well. This, this is something that you should look at and understand. If you're doing this in the lab and you're starting to see this, you're going to start to see something phenomenal here. You can't break gravity without it. It has to be there. It's hard to define. Just like this gravity flyer is sometimes hard to define. All the parts are just general junk. You can use just about anything. Some parts are going to work better than others in materials. But if you don't understand the high voltage and how to convert it, man, it's going to be a real difficult road. That's why I tried to show it on my channel and tried to talk about it in a couple of videos and then show when somebody validates it. Because when you see it validated, it's like, man, is that power source bad? No, the power source is working just fine. It, it, is it something else? No. It's the frequency and the duty cycle that are really tearing through this to change it. Now, you're going to have a beat rate in your craft. It's going to take, that's going to be your duty cycle. You don't have to change the duty cycle. It's going to change automatically. You're going to be able to change when you hit the piezo buzzer, the frequency automatically. So do you have to worry about them necessarily? No, as long as you understand what they're doing, you're okay. Because you're going to get a conversion automatically. But to understand the craft, you're going to have to understand it. That's why hitting the button is so different. You say, oh my God, so you're putting a megahertz frequency into a massive testicle amperage. That's huge. Yeah, it is. If you play with Tesla coils, you'll understand this a lot easier. You're going, man, you're putting a monster number into this thing when you do that. Yeah, I am. That's the whole point here. You've created a field on the outside of a static electricity that's now charged the entire air of this entire bubble that you're creating with this field. And now you're rapidly expanding it. And then, boom, when it converts back down, it's sucking in more and more to it, more air, more everything. And now it's getting converted and we're doing it again and again. It's going to be so much easier for the charge in this thing to grow, to expand. It's, it's an understanding that's going to drive you nuts. Because once you see it, now you're going to have to convert a lot more. So all of you out there doing this on the math on this, understand this. You hit multipliers in this thing that are not generally there. That's why it's changing so much. You say, I need a million volts. Well, do you? Are you getting it and you don't know it? Or are you hitting hundreds of thousands of volts automatically in it and converting things that you didn't know to convert? When you charge all that air, that air and that charge converts over to voltage and amps. I mean, did you, did you account for that? Did you account for the size of the field growing? Some of those things are going to have to be accounted for in physics when you do all this problem solving. That's why I generally say do the test, do the understanding on it before you start calculating things because it's going to be a disaster in the end. People like to go to watts. I absolutely hate converting to watts because it, it, it hides things. It hides what you're actually building in your voltage. Now, if you just want to figure out the amount of power in the craft as a, a uh, general understanding, absolutely. It's not... If you just want to figure out the amount of joules of energy in it, go right ahead. That It's absolutely perfect for that. I'm not saying that it's not. What I'm saying is if I want to go in and build your project and I just give you a watt number, man, am I misleading you. I am giving you the complete wrong information that you need. I'm giving you no direction whatsoever on what your voltage is doing. And it's absolutely a misnomer for somebody going to reverse engineer it. It's going to be a disaster. 
if you put it in your equation that this is what you're getting and you understand the flow of it and you have a way to convert the flow in the mathematics, then you'll be okay. The hard thing is to pin all this stuff down. That's why you see people like Jared out there with all these different scopes and stuff. They're trying to pin it down. The hard thing is, is understanding the flow and which way to look at it. You can do a giant amount of numbers on stuff. If you're not seeing the flow and how it's going, it's going to be very hard to put this thing on paper and put every little part of it down. It comes to an understanding of how this thing works before you write it all down. There's going to be a lot of parts you might miss. And I don't want to see anybody do that. I want to see everybody get it right. So I'm telling you the information you need to know. There's a flow here. And like I said, it's like a fluid cell. And if you can understand this, you can start to understand this graph. What, you know, like I said earlier, why would you pick this one over others? Because it does it all. And it does it all in the simplest format possible. There's no understanding neutrons. There's no understanding the capacitor that converts the whatever, you know, high, high value on the inside of your capacitor. Then you don't have to worry about all that. So... Just understand this. This is what's the easiest one to do to show the most amount of knowledge when it comes into this. So what is it actually doing? So let's just flat out say it. This thing is creating a capacitor that works inside of a bubble that actually expands fields in and out. It makes a jump in the air and then sustains that jump with the fields inside and the fact that it's converted over to charge on the inside and then it turns over to magnetism as soon as you hit the button and you jump it's now a magnetic field that's jumping against you know a bubble that's created on the outside the outside bubble itself is now separate from the earth therefore it works differently you're creating your own atmosphere inside of it it's no longer part of the earth it's its own separate entity so it does not have the same rules as Earth anymore. For those of you that want to sit out there and apply rules to it from the Earth and how things are working, it's wrong. Inertia is now gone. You are now working with the atmosphere that you have inside the craft. Therefore, things like inertia are different. This is what everybody wants when they're in aeronautics. When they want their airplane to go faster, they have to do this. This is one of those things that's going to be able to kill the inertia in it. So, would it work better if the entire craft sat there and spun? Yeah, it would. Why? Because it then pulls it through the air instead of pushing against it. You're no longer going to have that. It's going to work like a Tesla turbine. And it's now going to cut through the air instead of pushing up a big field around it. Or a big field in front of it that is forcing itself against a lot of this stuff, guys, you're going to have to start building to understand it. And everybody who's out there converting it, just understand there's a ton more here to convert, which is fine. It all can be done, but you're going to have to know it's there. So I would encourage everybody to, you know, when, once this thing starts jumping off the ground, just understand I, I'm going to be able to do it quickly. Once, once it jumps, it's game over. I've got it. Because all I have to do is make a double jump. If I can make a double jump, understand this. Then all I have to do is take the original Tesla coil number, increase it so that the oscillation continues that jump. So it just continues to multiple jump, multiple jump, multiple jump, and it'll stay in the same area. And then I'll hit it with a big amount of power and make a big jump. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Now that I understand all the rest of it and where to amplify this thing and why how it's working, you know what I mean, in between each interaction, that's all I need. That's that's game over. Once I can get it to jump off the ground, it's game over. I have it. I, there's no getting around it. You're going to see it fall over a couple times if I'm in the wrong octave. But then once I have it, it's going to work. That's it. It's all about that Tesla coil. It's all about getting it right. You know, that's why Sean and I are working on these Tesla coils in order to build this thing out into a big understanding of this Tesla coil with this ZVS circuit so that we can get this thing right. You're going to be able to pull up this chart, look at it, and go, okay, I need this toy coil at this frequency right here. I need this number one coil. I need the size, you know, the width of the pipe. 
and I need this exact uh, gauge on the uh, wire, on the magnet wire. And you're going to be good to go. And that's why we're doing it. And I'm so excited. I, I don't even know what to tell you. Three weeks I've been out of it. Three weeks I haven't been able to do this. It's driving me nuts. Now it's fun to go on and talk about other projects and I love doing it. But I really want to do mine. And like I said, I'm almost there. I got my fingers working. They're no longer stiff. My hand's starting to come into order. I have absolutely no strength in it. But it'll grow. As long as I'm able to use it, I'm going to be good to go. I got maybe a couple more days if this, you know, continues to progress the same way it is. Buddy, I'm back in the game. Okay, I'm back, you know, back working on this thing. And we're going to start talking about Gravity Flyer more. Now, the other stuff on my channel, sometimes I show other people's stuff, guys. Just understand this. I think creators are awesome. I think that they need to be looked at more. I think some of the smaller channels need some more views. And if I can help in any way and do that, I'm going to. Because it's the right thing to do. you got to pay it forward. A lot of people help me out to get my channel up a little higher so that everybody can see it and view it. And I think it's the right thing to do. So I'm going to continue to do that on the channel. I'm going to expand out some of the research work that we do. Uh, I'm looking at the Bendini motor. And we're looking at uh, Gerald's stuff over there. Uh, they're tied together. And, and if you can figure that one out, man, then you'll start to understand a little bit. They both are doing this one of the same effects that are working and it's easy to, easy to see. I don't want to say much more because you know what? I'm trying to hold out for what Gerald's doing and I want to make sure he gets all the views possible when he shows what his coil does. God, I'm just dying inside right now. I can't even tell you. I can't even express to you how much I want to say what I know about this thing. But I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to wait. Gerald, mm, you know it's killing me. But the right thing is the right thing. Uh, we're doing a, a live show on Monday. Uh, this is coming up Monday. And we're going to talk about the Mendini motor. Mike Dawes has one that he does it on, uh, you know, he, he has made one. So we're going to take a look at that. And then Benefactor wants to build one. So he's going to, you know, get his list together on that. So hopefully anybody who wants to build it can do it. I'm actually making a frame for one of the motors that he did. And uh, hopefully that'll tie in. For those of you guys that don't know, I'm an expert on Fusion 360. Well, not an expert, but pretty close. Build anything I want on there. And I can start putting it together and, you know, build frames, uh, build motors on there, all kinds of cool stuff. So I like to get involved in some of these projects. Uh, made a coil for Benefactor, the plastic parts for it, so that he was able uh, to build a second coil. He's going to, I should say. And then we're looking at it. I want to build a coil inside of another one. And I found the 3D print for it. So I might be building that one on my own. If my hand's better, I can do it. Otherwise, Benefactor is so graciously said he would help me out with that. And I really do appreciate that. Guys, I, like I said, a couple more days. I'm back in the game. And I can't wait. You know, I don't, I don't like sitting on the sidelines. I, I like to do the work as well as anybody else. Anyway, guys, if you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, comment, do all those fun things. Guys, always have yourself a great day because I'm having one today because my hand's getting better. Yeah, baby, let's get this done. I'll see you guys later.